There is no doubt that our climate is changing and altering our landscapes and even our plants that we grow. And as gardeners, we often look to the botanic gardens for inspiration. But sadly, these beautiful, unique plants are not immune to what the future holds. So the question is, how long will they last? I'm here at the Royal Botanic Gardens of Victoria with Professor Tim and Whistle to learn about a program being run to future-proof the gardens to the predicted climate of 2090. As gardeners, I believe we're trying our best to fight against climate change uh, with the knowledge that we have, but what are some of the things that you're doing here at the gardens? Well, for us in a, a big botanic garden like this, we can do things, I suppose home gardeners find hard to do. We have slightly more resources, but also we have a, a more complicated garden. So we're trying to grow all kinds of things outside their natural range. And what are some of the ways you're combating those challenges? Look, there's lots of things we do here that people can do in home gardens, like they can mulch their plants, they can make sure they put plants together that need a lot of water, and over here somewhere else where they don't need as much water, so you're using water efficiently. Um, we also, here in the gardens, we can actually get water down deep, so when there's water around and we get storm water from local streets, we can put that deep into the soil so it's there for the hot summer months. So when we're looking at combating and, and I suppose responding to climate change, we have to think very carefully about what we're planting, very carefully about our old trees, so lots of heritage trees here, 100, 150 years old, and what's going to happen to them as they age. And, and really interestingly is what do we replace them with that will survive a changing climate? Your beautiful big old oak tree has fallen. Tell us a bit about that. The staff are really sad about this tree loss. Visitors are coming to visit it, to look at it. We've actually left it in place and we're going to do that for a few more months so people can effectively mourn this beautiful old... It's a white oak. It's been here, we think, about 150 years. The whole tree collapsed. And look, that's a combination of... Uh, we can see a little bit of fungal and insect attack. We know it. It's, it was really tough during the millennial drought. We know that there's more winds, there's more threat. With climate change, we're getting more extreme weather. All that combined on a very old tree, and it's fallen over. So we're very, very, very sad. I'm aware that in 2018, you have set up a program to help fight some of these issues, is that correct? Yeah, we realised what we were doing here at Melbourne and yeah. Cranbourne, both our gardens, in fact, was doing or making decisions about botanic gardens that no one else was doing around the world. We were actually analysing what we were planting. We thought, let's start an alliance of botanic gardens. So we call it the Climate Change Alliance of Botanic Gardens. We had 10 gardens come from all over the world, so South Africa, South America, Europe, China, came to the gardens here. We met. Since then, we've got another 50 gardens have joined up. And it's about sharing information, ideas, and this alliance we think is going to set up a, a network that'll last for a very long time and be really important right around the world. It's wonderful that us Aussies are taking the first steps to fight this global issue. And the Climate Change Alliance of the Botanic Gardens is an amazing program and one that we can all get behind.